Well, earlier today in Davos, hedge fund legend Ray Dalio warning the economy is out over its skis. Take a listen. We're going to have a slowing of, slowing of the economy, not just in the U.S., but in Europe. And you're going to have a slower economy in other places. And that's going to have an effect. That'll bring growth down to a certain level. In that, that notion of how monetary policy will be part of that, and at that same time, politics and this disparity issue are going to merge. Our next guest agrees with Dahlia, but says don't run for the hills just yet. Add risk to your portfolio now. Let's bring in Rebecca Patterson, Chief Investment Officer at Bessemer Trust. Rebecca, it's always great to see you. Great to be here. Um, so add risk. What kind of risk are you talking about? Well, we're keeping our risks steady. So we're neutral oh, okay. equities versus our clients' long-term benchmarks. We're not adding risk, but we're saying don't get out. So you're right. Don't get out. We're okay. saying it's not time to get out yet. I agree with, with Ray Dalio. How could you not? Mm -hmm. Of course, things are going to slow, but a lot of that is already discounted. As you said, Tim, in valuations in a lot of these stocks, probably too much is discounted. And certainly consensus estimates for growth have been brought down a lot, too. So even though we're getting the volatility like we had today and we're getting mixed messages of FedEx versus a UPS, we think that the U.S. consumer, which is 70 percent of the U.S. economy, you have lower gasoline prices, you have a strong job market, you have rising incomes, lower interest rates have helped with mortgages. Despite the house data today, I think the pending home sales, the mortgage uh, applications are going to go up. So I think the consumer in the U.S. is still very strong. And we, so we don't want to count out the U.S. yet. Um, but in terms of where this year goes, I agree, it's going to be slowing. And we are late cycle. So you don't want to get over your skis, as uh -huh. you said, Melissa. But I don't think it's time to get out of the skis and go into the lodge. So you're overweight uh, U.S. equities yes. at this point in your portfolio. Where in U.S. equities are you? It sounds like you're a big fan of the consumer. So would you go for that consumer-facing name, retail, sort of those discretionary types or no? Well, oh, no. Yeah, you like well, the consumer and think it's strong, but you won't Well, retail's in got consumer. other headwinds, right, sure. in terms of everything going on online. But I think, you know, just the comments we heard earlier today from Adidas and, and the report we got last month from Nike, you know, even if China is slowing, the Chinese consumer isn't not buying everything. Thing. They're, they're bifurcating. I think it's an active uh, stock picker's market right now. There are great companies with great management that can still benefit from a growing middle class across emerging markets, including China, even with it slowing. So there are parts of the consumer we do like, absolutely. So my quick question back to you would be, to me, consumer optimism, all that is is an overlay of the S&P 500, the Dow Jones in broader terms. And I think people see the market go higher, they feel better, they feel better, they spend money. Mm -hmm. If we have another leg down in the stock market, I understand, I've never count out the U.S. consumers want to spend, but would they pull back if you were to see another leg down and then would become sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy? So I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, although I think that the part of the U.S. population that owns the stocks and watches the S&P every day is a smaller proportion of the economy than the whole U.S. economy, right? But, but the, the high beta consumer, if you will, is going to drive the market more, the, the people with the wealth, with the big equity portfolios. We're taking a view that this year could go down one of two paths. We get progress on trade despite the headline noise today. Um, the shutdown eventually ends. China, all the stimulus and more to come stabilizes things. EM, emerging markets probably outperform, but global stocks broadly do well. If that happens, the Fed starts raising rates again. It's no longer priced in, so we're back to where we were in October. So we're late cycle. Dalio's still right, but on a, one path. The other path is this doesn't go well. Forget China. We also have the auto tariffs, which we're going to start talking about in the next few weeks. We've got the debt ceiling, which is coming. There's a lot that could go wrong. That's why I like having the U.S. overweight. If things go well, the U.S. will participate. If things don't go well, the U.S. tends to outperform in periods of stress because of the dollar, because people buy treasuries and boost the dollar, uh -huh. and because of liquidity in the U.S., which tends to help it perform less badly than other markets. But in the first scenario, you say we'll be back to where we are in October. Will we be in that box where the Fed is going to raise rates and the markets freak out, and so you don't want to be in that box? Well, we'll be on the path to that box, right? Because okay. if everything goes well, confidence improves. Maybe we don't get 4% growth again, but things are back to feeling good globally then the Fed wants to keep hiking, and that's not priced in anymore. So as the market prices it in, we start to get worries about housing and autos and credit. So we're back to that place where things get vulnerable, but for a different reason. Okay. I know it's a little complicated, but the bottom line is you want to stay overweight the right. U.S. 
But if you are bullish, if you think things can go okay, having some emerging markets giving the valuations, I think, is attractive as well. So then where do you want to be underweight? Europe or Europe? Europe, Europe. Oh, Lord, <laughs> stay away. Oh, okay. We put out well, a white just paper. Asking a question. I, I'm not calling for the breakup of the euro, but I think the challenges facing Europe today, both cyclically and structurally, are the greatest they've been in my lifetime. Okay. And I won't mm. tell you how old I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rebecca, always 36 great years, Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Rebecca Patterson of Bessemer Trust. I, I think when you look at Europe, as Rebecca said, you have, uh, they're teetering on recession. Japan teetering on recession. China, maybe, dare I say, going the same way. I don't know if there's a lot to be feeling confident about here, because even if we perform on, on a relative basis, outperform the rest, I don't know if that's such a rosy scenario. And if rates go up, emerging markets are going to get hit as well, even worse than our markets. You sound markets. like there's no place to go. Yeah. I, well, I do think that the market needs a reset. I don't think recession is off the table here. The, uh, the 2 10 spread is 15 bips away, 15 basis points. There's nothing really encouraging about that. I don't think anything has changed other than the market has run 13 percent in a very short period of time. So, you know, it, the, the G7 has a problem. EM is going to consume two-thirds of the world's manufacturer's goods by 2025 and be 50 percent of consumption. You have to worry about this. It's diminishing, uh, you know, essentially output by the G7. So um, what Rebecca was saying that as things muddle along better, rest of world versus U.S. is still the trade. That's the trade that's been the right trade since October. Doesn't mean in, in absolute terms that's been a great trade. Um, I think that's where you want to be. But I think we have to remind people that there are great companies right now that shouldn't be trading where they are. And, and I think there are plenty of blue chip companies in that lane right now. Got a huge catalyst next week in the form of Facebook. I think Facebook's done that round turn from 125 to 151 or so, which is where the price was when Zuckerberg testified in the spring. I think that's going to be your catalyst for the next leg lower. I still think, I think Steve agrees, that we're going to retest that December 24th low.